Trump derangement syndrome. It's back. Trump can't stand on stage with cops now. Cops stand with politicians all the time. In 92, cops stood behind Clinton and then they endorsed him. Same thing with Obama Biden. And here's Joe blasting ultra MAGA Republicans with Pennsylvania police chiefs right behind him. Cops always play a role in politics. Most sheriffs are elected. This dictator on day one hoax has really done a number on these people. The first lady went on CBS and called them fake news. When these polls like the Wall Street Journal one land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states. That... No, he's not losing in all the battleground all but one. states. He's coming up and he's um, even or doing better. So mm. you know what? Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, mm -hmm. it's obvious that Joe will win this election. It's obvious Joe's going to win. Does the doctor know something we don't? Whatever happened to run like you're behind? Today, Biden overslept and was late to an 11 o'clock speech. He didn't show up until an hour later. And if you look closely, you can see the CPAP creases on his face. He wears a machine around his noggin to keep him breathing at night. He has sleep apnea. And if he has a creasy face at noon, he just got out of bed. He kept Bernie Sanders waiting an hour. That's either a power move by Biden or that's just sleepy. The president didn't fly home from a West Coast campaign stop last night late. Yesterday, the president did nothing. He had a phone call. That's it. Now, I wouldn't be sleeping in at this stage of the campaign. New Wall Street Journal poll, Biden's not ahead in a single battleground. Trump's up in North Carolina, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia. It's all even in Wisconsin. And in last night's Wisconsin primary, 50,000 Democrats cast a protest vote against Biden. But it gets worse for him. Look at their approval ratings in the states that'll decide the election. Trump's really popular, and Joe's not. His coalition's collapsing. Blacks, Hispanics, young Americans, mostly men, don't want to have anything to do with the Democratic Party. And one reason, Mayor Pete's mocking you for not buying nerdmobiles. Let's be clear that uh, the automotive sector is moving toward EVs, and we can't pretend otherwise. Sometimes when these debates happen, I feel like it's the early 2000s, and I'm talking to some people who uh, think that we can just have landline phones forever. Uh, the reality is that the automotive sector is moving toward EVs, and the U.S. can either fall behind China or we can claim the lead. Number one, the government didn't spend a trillion dollars to make us buy cell phones and didn't shame us for keeping our landlines. Number two, just because something's modern doesn't make it better. What tastes better, real meat or lab grown? Would you rather live in a 14th century castle or in some drab postmodern slab? Would you rather relax at the beach or bake in a tanning bed? Exactly. Electric cars aren't better, they're just an option. Democrats keep forgetting the customer is always right. This election isn't about what Democrats want it to be about. It's about what voters say it's about, making our lives easier. At some point in time, you've got to take into account what the voters are thinking about. The voters, a lot of them out there, tens of millions of them out there, by the way, don't care what he's going through right now. They don't care about the 91 counts. They're thinking about their lives. And a lot of times we see politicians taking the positions that they're taking. And while we can respect their candor and their honesty, they do seem a bit detached at time from what the voters are actually feeling. If you're Joe Biden, what are you really, really worried about right now? You're worried about folks coming to the polls. That doesn't exactly encourage them to get up out of their seats and go to the boat. Democrats thought they had a script. Biden would print the money, the economy would recover, and they'd put Trump on trial for January 6th. But January 6th wasn't 9-11. Voters don't care what a few politicians went through for a few hours four years ago. Yeah, people were scared. It was crazy. I get it. But we go through things, too. We're scared. We get hurt. We can't afford stuff. We don't like migrants murdering our women or fentanyl killing our men. But the Democrats only care about you if you're nodding along obediently. They're in the third act, and they're realizing the audience lost the plot. But they're sticking with the script. They're not listening to you because they don't care. 
Joe Biden's running the most highly produced, tightly choreographed, top-down campaign in presidential history. With the help of the CIA, corporate America, and media executives who want a puppet, who prints money, funds wars, and opens borders. As long as he doesn't offend anybody. When former ESPN reporter Sage Steele interviewed Biden, she says she was literally handed the script. Thank you for being here as we get set for a wonderful day I'm in happy sports. To be. Opening day for America's national pastime. This was about two months after he took office. It was so structured, and I was told, you will say every word that we write out, you will not deviate from the script and go. To the word, like, Every single question was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Biden got the questions ahead of time. Almost the entire interview was about sports. Two minutes of the interview was Biden telling a story about Jill putting a Flyers jersey on their dog. It was all scripted ahead of time. It wasn't a real interview. ESPN executives in the White House were in on it. And if you deviated from the script, you're fired. None of this is real. It's why Biden's done more interviews with a weatherman than with the New York Times. And as far as, you know, your, your memories of this house, you know, I mean, we're assuming, I don't know what, what the future holds, but what, what are your favorite memories about this place? Our kids jumping in bed with us, our grandkids when they're down here. Just sneaking up and jumping in bed with us. That's my favorite memory here. They love it. They love wandering through the halls. They love, there's two floors upstairs, a lot of bedrooms, it's a private residence, and they just love coming down. Our kids jumping in bed with us? Biden's youngest kid's 42. His grandkids? Well, Biden's grandkids are 30, 23, 23, 19, and 18. And Hunter's got two four year olds, and only one of them's ever been to the White House. Joe Biden needs Al Roker's questions ahead of time. There's your campaign. Deny the polls, ignore the voters, and stick to the script. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.